for International Women's Day this year, we're celebrating women in leadership towards achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. The COVID-19 pandemic has shone a light on the effective leadership of women, particularly in times of crisis, as heads of state, as senior officials, experts, and innovators, as business leaders, as 70% of the frontline health workforce exposed to a heightened risk of infection, homeschooling children, and as stewards and caregivers of families and communities. Women have stepped up to this challenge with courage, learning and adapting in a rapidly evolving situation. At the same time, inequities that disadvantage women have been exacerbated. Stay-at-home orders brought the livelihoods of many African women working in the informal sectors in businesses such as hairdressing or as market vendors, for example, to a standstill. Lockdowns, coupled with fears of infection and health workforce shortages, are among the reasons for reports of drops in access to contraception, to antenatal care, and births in health facilities in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and other countries. This has also increased the unpaid care provided by women at the household level. Restrictions, including school closures, also increased the risks of sexual and gender-based violence, teenage pregnancies, and dropping out of school, particularly for girls. This pandemic will have long-term impacts on the social and economic fabric of our societies, including progress towards gender equality. At WHO, we are providing guidance and technical support to governments to ensure the continuous delivery of essential gender-responsive services. 36 countries in the region have integrated at least one gender-responsive measure in their national COVID-19 response plans, and we've trained over 150 health workers in 22 African countries to support women suffering from gender-based violence. Within WHO, we remain committed to enabling women to advance in their careers and enhance their leadership potential. Over 80 female staff have participated in leadership training, and we're piloting its expansion to ministries of health. Thanks to the Africa Young Women Champions Initiative launched with the UN Volunteers Program one year ago, there are now scores of UN volunteers on board supporting WHO's work in African countries. Women now account for 33% of our workforce, up from 30% in 2015. We still have a lot to do there. And we have established a mentoring program and a task force to promote a more conducive working environment for women WHO staff in the region. In closing, this International Women's Day, I urge everyone to recognize the leadership skills and potential of women towards moving us closer to gender equality. This will help speed up progress towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals.